Five Below is currently at $140.67 a share. Yahoo analysts estimate it can move up to $210.71 a share in the next 12 months. And if it did that, that would be an increase of 49.79% in the next... Hey guys, um, since I've started developing my app, it's been giving me so many fundamentally sound cheaper stocks. I mean stocks like $5, $2 that I've been focusing on those lately and have not been presenting you guys with some regular stocks, the regular price stocks. So I'm going to present you with a regular price stock today that also was found by the app because it's fundamentally sound and it fell to its 52 week low and that is five below now five below is a three star I rank the stocks on my watch list in three tiers three stars which is the most fundamentally sound two stars which is beneath that and one star which is the least fundamentally sound but still fundamentally sound enough to make the watch list. Well, Five Below is a three star that's been falling. As you see, each of these candles represent a week. It fell this week. It moved up here, but it fell one, two, three, four, five more weeks. And this one is down so far. It's a six week. In any event, they have an earnings report coming out on July, on June 5th. And an earnings report, I like to say, it's like going to a casino. You never know what's going to happen. The earnings report can come out good and the price can really jump. It can come out bad and the price can really drop. The good news with this earnings report is that it's not until next month so it gives the stock some time to move up before the earnings report drops and if the stock does that and the earnings report comes out bad and it drops you could end up just losing some of the gains you've already made as opposed to cutting into your profits now, talking about the price of this stock, Five Below is currently at $140.67 a share. Yahoo analysts estimate it can move up to $210.71 a share in the next 12 months. And if it did that, that would be an increase of 49.79% in the next 12 months. So having looked at the candlestick chart for Five Below and talked a little about it, let's jump over and do the full analysis on this stock. So like we said, the name of this company is Five Below Inc. And the ticker symbol is F-I-V-E. Now, let's start by looking at the earnings per share for Five Below over the last five years. In 2019, their earnings were $2.66 a share. 2020 it was $3.12 a share. 2021 it was $2.20 a share. 2022 it was $4.95 a share. And 2023 it was $4.69 a share. And the Yahoo analysts are projecting this year to be at $5 
and 41 cents it should well actually that will be five dollars and 42 cents a share is what the analysts are projecting it to be at so we see the earnings moving up they dropped back in 21 dropped again in 23 but it seems like each year they drop the next year they go higher not only than what they dropped to but the previous year before them so let's look at the high and low prices for this stock in 2019 the stock was at $130.70 at its low. I'm sorry, $103.70 at its low. $147.50 at its high. In 2020, it was at $52.27 at its low. $174.98 at its high. In 2021, it was at $166.95 at its low, $236.21 at its high. In 2022, it was at $112.99 at its low, $207.71 at its high. And in 2023, it was at $146 at its low, $217.18 at its high. And here we are in 2024. It was at $139.20 at its low. Yahoo analysts project that it can move up to $210 and 71 cents at its high if it does in fact do that that would be an increase of 51.37 percent over the course of the year so if we look at the courses of these years 2019 it gained 42.24 percent 2020 the COVID lockdown year it gained an astounding 234.76 percent 2021 41.49 percent so it's hung around that 40 percent except for the COVID year but then when we come to 22 it was 83.83 percent back to that 40 percentile in 2023 48.75%. But if it goes up this year to where Yahoo analysts project, it's a 51.37% increase over the course of 12 months. Now, I really don't use this figure in estimating the um, stocks I pick I look at it ju just out of curiosity but I don't let it determine whether I buy a stock or not but for those who do for the free cash flow yield I I um Average the free cash flow by five years. And when I do that and I get the free cash flow yield, it's 0.81%. Now, let's look at one other thing. This stock was at a low PE of 38.98. And it's lower right now at 25.95. It moved up a little. In 2020, it was 16.75.
But remember, that was the COVID lockdown year. 2021, it was 75.89. 2023, it was 31.13. The only time that this, um, the only time that this stock, not counting the COVID years, has had a lower PE than it is right now in these last five years, not counting the COVID year, that is, because COVID year, it was 16.75, was 22.83, and that was back in 2022. So I'm going to calculate that 22.83 times 5.42 which is 2022's low PE times the current earnings per share gives me $123.73 meaning if this stock was to fall to its second lowest PE in the last five years, which is 2022, it would fall from this price to $123.73. We know it can fall lower, but in terms of probabilities, that's where we could see it falling around. However, we know if we have a stock that we're expecting to move up, we buy it and it starts moving down. We're not hanging around for it to move all the way down. We're selling out of it and looking for a better opportunity. Having said that, let's take a look at this income statement. And we see that in 2019, this company made one billion five hundred and fifty nine thousand I'm sorry, one billion five hundred and fifty nine million five hundred and sixty three thousand. Of that they retained one million one hundred and forty nine million six hundred and forty five thousand after paying all expenses. That was a nine point six zero percent profit margin. Not a horrible profit margin. Not a good or great profit margin. I would say a decent one. When it gets up to around 20, that's when I'm very happy. 20 or above. But 9%, I consider that decent. I could live with that on the right company. 2020, they made one billion eight hundred and forty six million seven hundred and thirty thousand in overall sales and revenue. Of that after paying all expenses, they retained a hundred and seventy five million fifty six thousand. That was a nine point four eight percent profit margin. Twenty twenty one their sales and revenue went up, but their Net income, what they retained after paying all expenses, that dropped. So, they made one billion nine hundred and sixty-two million one hundred and thirty-seven thousand in sales and revenue. After paying all expenses, they retained one hundred and twenty-three thousand one hundred and twenty-three million three hundred and sixty-one thousand. That was a six point two nine percent profit margin. In twenty twenty two they made two billion eight hundred and forty eight million three hundred and fifty four thousand. Now after paying all expenses they retained two hundred and seventy eight million eight hundred and ten thousand. That was a nine point seven nine percent profit margin. And in 2023, 
they made 3,076,308,000. After paying all expenses, they retained 261,528,000. That was a 8.50% profit margin. Now, if we move down and look at their return on equity, with the exception of 21, 2021, I like these numbers, 24.33% return on equity in 2019, 23.04% return on equity in 2020. Now in 2021 it dropped 13.99% return on equity. But in 2022 it's back on track 24.89% return on equity and 2023 19.20% return on equity. Slight drop but not much. Now, when we look at debt to equity, we see in 2019, it was 54.82%. 2020, it was 157.79%. 2021, it was 162.48%. 2022, it was 157.12%. And 2023, it was 144.13%. These are all under 200%, which I like to see. 2019 was great. It was under 100%. But the rest were under 200%, which I like to see. Now... Based on the debt to equity, the balance sheet should be pretty decent. And it is, we see that the current assets just about double the current liabilities for all five years well not exactly double in the later years not so much but the current assets are higher than the current liabilities all five years and the total assets are higher than the total liabilities in all five years which is what we like to see on a balance sheet this company did pay a dividend. No, I'm sorry. This company did not pay a dividend. But when we come to change in capital stock, that tells us whether a company that we're investing in sold more shares of stock, which we hate, or bought back more shares of stock, which we love. In 2019, they sold 2,408,000 worth of shares. Don't like to see that. But when it comes to 2020, 2021, and 20, 2020, 2021, 22, and 23, we like that activity. They were buying back shares. They bought back 32,340,000 worth in 2020, 6,838,000 worth in 2021, 58,793,000 worth in 2022 and 38,406,000 worth in 2023. Now, this company, in terms of free cash flow, they had 
413000 in 2019. That's the actual cash they have as opposed to the income statement which shows a net total line but there could be other factors which are affecting these numbers no the free cash flow is actual cash 2020 they were negative 25 million 268,000 but in 2021 they had 165 million 777,000 in 2022 they had 39 million 745,000 and in 2023 they had 62 million 972,000 now one of the reasons that I like not the only reason but one of the reasons I like to know about the free cash flow is because when a company pays dividends they pay it from their free cash flow so I like to know if they can afford to pay you that dividend or if they're just paying a dividend to attract you to their stock but they really can't afford it in this case they're not even giving a dividend so it's not a factor but the only year that free cash flow was negative was 2020 now this stock has a pretty high beta beta of 1.21 and we know that the beta is a measure of how volatile a stock is how much does it move if it has a beta the market has a beta of generally about one so if the stocks beta is less than one it moves less than the market and if the stocks beta is more than one it moves more than the market this stock has a beta of 1.21 so it's more volatile than the market if we look at outstanding shares there are 55.19 million outstanding shares of this company and the shares that's held by insiders those who work in are involved with the company 1.88 percent that seems like a small number but it's actually a pretty I wouldn't say it's a huge number but when you consider you're talking about 1.88 percent of 55.19 million that's a larger number than you think and generally I analyze a lot of companies it's normal to find I say a lot of companies have less than 1% as shares held by insiders. As far as institutions, this company, now remember I get these statistics from Yahoo Finance. I never understand how they do this, but they have the institutional ownership at 110.06 percent I don't see how you own more than 100 percent of a company but in any event what I have discovered is when I see companies with more than 100 percent by institutions in Yahoo those can end up moving significantly because when you have individual owners like me and you those people can be a little fickle based on the movement of the stock but institutional or professional owners they can they buy a lot of shares and they can weather the storm a little so they're not gonna jump out and for any reason however if they do jump out 
they're selling a lot of shares and that can make the price drop. But in any event, this company has a $28.7, a $28.71 book value for a PB ratio of 4.90. I really don't pay much attention to book value and I have a video on the channel explaining why. But I rather look at whether the company is buying back or selling more shares of stock. The manager, as far as the management, Mr. Joel D. Anderson, born 1965, is the president, CEO, and director. So I would think he's around 59. And five below is in the specialty retail industry, consumer cyclical sector. So that's it for my analysis on five below, guys. Have a great day. I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.